What's going on guys? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Today we're going to talk about my personal top five series of the year. Um, these are books that I was picking up regularly on my pull list. I know there are tons of series out nowadays, um, so it's tough to come up with a good top five. But, you know, I pick up about 12 series a, a month, so... Um, you know, uh, picking a top five for, for me is a possibility, um, and I'm just keeping it contained to my list, so let's dive into it. First off, we've got Doom Patrol by Gerard Way and Jeremy Lambert. Um, there are a few other artists I jump into, but it's mostly Jeremy Lambert. Um, so far, we've got five issues of this year. It's a seven-issue series, um, or so it's been solicited anyway. Um, the thing is about it, you know, the previous Doom Patrol series ended on issue 12, um, kind of suddenly really um, so this is sort of a continuation um, of that series um, obviously since the you know Gerard Way is still writing it um, but we do actually see it in one of the first pages it says issue 13 underneath the credits in the artwork um, so you know we've got some team changes that have happened over the past couple of years um, we've still got some guys like Larry Trainer on the team um, Robot Man's still on there but um, there have been a lot of changes a lot of craziness happening really great series Next up, we've got Martian Manhunter, um, written by Steve Orlando, artwork by Riley Rossmo. This is going to be a 12-issue maxi series. So far, we are sitting at issue number 10. It just came out last week. Um, really, really great series. The thing about Steve Orlando is he can be a hit or miss writer. For me, he always hits when he's doing a solo series, um, especially if it's a mini or or something along those lines. Um, and that really shows with Martian Manhunter. He's a, he's going to you know different points of time. Um, when John lived on Mars and, um, you know, the current time as it's set in the story um, is while he's a detective. So you get to see great moments with him connecting with his children, um, his child, his daughter, my bad. Um, and Riley Rossmo's artwork, I think, really um, works for this title. I'm not always a big fan of his. Um, you know, his Batman stuff wasn't up, up to my taste, but I'm really digging what he's been doing with Martian Manhunter. It's been great seeing John interact with his partner and John interact with his family and to see how all of that stuff combines in this sort of stylish reimagination of the series. Really great. Um, of course, we also had the uh, Hickmen this year, um, House of X, Powers of X, Phenomenal, phenomenal series. Um, they all they both combined into one grand storyline. Great artwork um, by Pepe Larraz and R.G. Silva. Um, really phenomenal stuff. I haven't always been a big fan of the X-Men, but this uh, this event really caught me, this storyline. Um, it's very epic, very grand. There's a lot of information going on, a lot of world building in a, you know, in a world that doesn't, you would think doesn't necessarily need a lot of world building anymore, but there's a lot happening under Jonathan Hickman's wing. Um, it's very, very exciting. There's a lot of dark secrets um, within Krakoa. We get to see Krakoa. We get to see where all the mutants stand now. Um, we got to see, you know, the different aspects of Krakoa. And um, we also did get to see uh, mutants show up and team up that we um, otherwise wouldn't think so. Then, of course, the powers of X, you had different timelines going on, the mutants that survived, um, of course, and you also have certain new mutants that have shown up. A lot of crazy stuff going on. It was fantastic. Thank you, Jonathan Hickman. Um, next up for me was The Dreaming. Um, fantastic series. Simon Spurrier writing um, artwork by uh, Bilquis Evely for the most part, but there were some stand-in artists like Danny, um, and I forget the names of the others, my bad, um, but it's a great series. It follows up off of the Sandman, um, and you know, what's happened now is uh, the dreaming is sort of broken. It's fragmented. There are cracks. There are new things showing up um, that hadn't previously been there. There are plots within plots going on. Um, it's really, really awesome. Um, you know, Daniel, a.k.a. Morpheus, a.k.a. Sandman, is gone. And so you've got Lucian trying to pick up the pieces. You've got Merv trying to clean things up. Kane and Abel are investigating these new things popping up. Um, you've got new characters like Dora showing up. who can She can travel in between dreams and collect stuff from, from people's dreams and return to the dreaming. There's a whole mystery behind her and what's going on. And, of course, we get to spend some more time with, more time with Merv. Always a good thing. Um, and number one for me was Green Lantern by Grant Morrison. Um, this did bleed into 2018 a little bit, but 12 issues of awesomeness. Um, I mean, this was seriously such a creative series, such a, a different take on Green Lantern, um, bringing it back to its roots, looking at different aspects of the character and his history and sort of really projecting them into a comic book um, that 
These issues are so rereadable. I've thoroughly enjoyed every single one of them. The artwork's amazing. The craziness of it all, uh, the Grant Morrison craziness of it all is there. And the whole season, as they're calling it, um, wraps up, you know, the first part of the plot. It does feel like a TV show season, I will admit. Um, they, they did make it work. But what really makes the book stand out, in my opinion, is Liam Sharp's phenomenal artwork. I mean, there are some pages you will read and your jaw will just be on the floor. Ridiculous amounts of detail. His style sort of changes, his paneling based on the issue and the type of story they're telling within that issue. Um, really, really well thought out. Um, a lot of detail. We do see Hal Jordan. We see Green Lanterns from all across the multiverse. Um, but mostly the main character, obviously, is Hal Jordan. And he's adventuring through these crazy things and these issues. Um, each issue does sort of feel like its own story, but it all wraps into this grand 12-issue story that will continue. It's continuing in Black Stars now and will continue in Season 2, I'm sure. Um, unless it gets wrapped up in Black Stars. But, I mean, just looking at the detail of Liam Sharp's work, um, it's amazing what he did with Oa, what he's done with all these lanterns, you know, Lantern Vork, who's a volcano head that's literally erupting. And, you know, within the dialogue, you'll hear the, you'll see the rumbles. We see the multiverse. We see the guardians of the multiverse uh, and what they're struggling with. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. If you're going to read anything, read Green Lantern by Grant Morrison. But... Um, that's it for me. Those were my top five series that I've been reading. Um, there are some upcoming books I'm excited about. Um, of course, uh, you know, we've got Hellblazer that started up. We've got Rye from Valiant, which started off with, with a really great um, start. And um, what else was there? What else was there? Of course, X-Men by Jonathan Hickman. I didn't include that here. I separated it from House of X and Powers of X because it is its own thing. And it's kind of been a bit slow to start, in my opinion. Um, so I'm just keeping that as a something to look out for. Of course, there are a ton of honorable mentions, a lot of books I haven't been able to read. I mean, Gideon Fall sounds like the greatest series that's ever been written. Um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff from Marvel that's going on that's good that I haven't been reading. And likewise from DC, there's just a lot of stuff. So let me know in your comments below, guys, what you thought, what your top five series of this year were if you are collecting floppy issues. Um, and thanks for tuning in. This was Mike from the Hardcover Comic. As always, until next time, you stay classy, Internet.